We removed the original bifold schoolie doors and replaced them with a custom sized aluminum RV door with kind of a standard deadbolt and uh, door handle setup. Um, we have an exterior table which has a lock in place that folds down, creates some external um, tabletop surface. We've also got a 15 foot uh, awning. We've got a 15 foot Aleco awning, which is nice. Um, because it can extend and collapse without having to bring the feet out onto the ground. Makes for a uh, fairly easy setup and breakdown. Uh, we have exterior lighting on, we have two on the right side, one on the left and one on the rear. And then we have exterior cameras. We have, you can see one here and one in the same location on the other side um, for blind spot visibility when driving. And then we also have a camera on the back of the bus, um, you know, as a backup camera. Um, we have 110 power out here, so you can cook or work out here um, fairly easily. And then on this side, you can see here is where we mounted our 2200 uh, BTU mini split. So that's the condenser unit here on the right side. So here on the back right side, we have our water fill. We have city pressure here, um, so you can bypass the pump and take pressure directly from the hose. Uh, we also have a gravity fill, which is not really used to fill the tank as much, more of a fail safe in case there was ever any issues or we needed to fill from a can. And then on the back of the bus, you can see again that we have exterior lighting, rear backup camera. Um, we also have a couple antennas up top. The tall skinny one is we, uh, WeBoost, which is a cellular range extender. The other antenna is called an NC Connect. It's a 4G cellular internet. Um, worked really well for us, but at some point we decided to upgrade to high speed, so we also have a Starlink satellite as well that we mount up on top. So in the back of the bus is where we keep our water tank and water filtration. So here we have two giant RV water filters. We have a sediment filter and a one micron filter. Um, these are pre-filters before you go into the water tank. And then we have a 55 PSI SureFlow water pump as well as an expansion tank. Um, we have an external spigot, so you can hook up a hose and uh, use water outside of the bus. And then right behind that, we have under our bed, um, our 155 gallon fresh water tank. On the rear left side of the bus is where we have our 50 amp shore power hookup. We have an inline surge protector, so no need for any external surge protectors. All four rear tires are pretty much brand new. Um, they've got about 10,000 miles on them. They're not retreads, they're actually new tires. Um, so they're in very good shape. Um, and then on the left side here is where we have our gray tank. We have a 75 gallon gray tank um, with a manual dump valve. And then again, exterior lighting on all sides of the bus, um, mainly for security on this side. And then on the front of the bus, we kept the bus mirrors. It's nice for visibility when parking. It gives you a, a visibility of your front tires so you can really see um, curbs and close objects pretty clearly. Um, we still have the original headlights, but we installed um, an auxiliary LED off-road light just to give us some supplemental lighting in inclement weather conditions. Um, comes with a block heater as well. Um, so for cold weathers, uh, that's always critical to make for an easy start. So here at the front of the bus, um, you can see we have a lot of cedar elements in our bus. We've got cedar planking all along the ceiling. Um, some cedar countertop here, which steps down to create room for um, hanging storage, um, usually coats. Um, another tabletop up here, as well as some additional storage um, next to the door and some hanging storage for keys and whatnot. Here is our mini split above the windshield. Again, it's an 18,000 air condition and heat. Above that, we have our Max Air vent fan. 
And then over here in the cockpit, uh, we have all the rocker switches to control the exterior elements of the bus. Um, here we have exterior um, emergency lighting, um, so it's your flashers, as well as your exterior roof running lights, um, which are necessary in bad weather conditions with bigger vehicles. Uh, then we also have controls here for all of the exterior LEDs, so that's the left side, the right side, and the rear. Uh, and then we have three heater switches as well, so that would be driver side, passenger side, and uh, windshield defroster. We have some additional storage with a flip-up cabinet above the driver's seat. Um, as well as then um, we have roll-down um, window shades, so these are actually um, made using Reflectix material inside. Um, so they just roll down, gives you some nice uh, heat protection from the sun. Another Reflectix roll down shade here on the driver's side door. Um, and then across the windshield, we have a tension cable uh, lines. We also have uh, removable panels with Reflectix for all the windows that have these tension cables. Um, we'll show you that later in a cabinet where we store those. Behind the driver's seat, we have another AC outlet. And then moving back, we have a set of cabinets here besides the entry door. Uh, this lower cabinet, uh, we actually use for our cat's litter box. So there's an entrance here from the front of the bus. Um, then we have another smaller cabinet here. Uh, use this pet food and pet supply storage. And then farther back here, we actually have a mini washer and dryer. So this unit will actually just drain into the shower pan. Um, you'll hook it up to the shower, uh, the wand for the shower. So you can unscrew this, attach it to the washer dryer and you have about three and a half gallons of um, portable washing and drying for the road. This is our dining table. The table itself folds down and stows off against the wall to increase the open floor space. Um, these chairs are actually outdoor furniture and they're stackable, so they can all be stacked up and positioned out of the way again to kind of increase the space inside of the bus. Um, we also have an additional flush mount USB and 110 outlet behind dining, and then LED strip lighting above. actually have our TV stowed away in this cabinet here behind our dining. Flips open and then we have a computer mount for a 35 inch TV screen. So it pulls out and rotates. You have a nice TV setup. Um, we also have a locking mechanism for these doors. It's actually just a child, cab child cabinet lock. So you have a switch here to engage or disengage the lock. So you have the option to engage the lock when driving. And then you have a magnetic release, um, so it keeps all the cabinet doors locked and closed when driving without any external fasteners. Here we have our couch behind the bathroom and across from dining. Um, next to the couch we have an additional cabinet storage. We have a sliding shelf storage here, and then underneath open storage, which is great for paper towels or toilet paper or any other cleaning and bathroom essentials. Uh, the couch itself is actually a cut down uh, memory foam mattress. We cut it to size. So it's about 12 inches thick and it's extremely comfortable. Um, and then bonus, you have uh, an extra bed up here. Um, under the couch, we have piston assisted um, lifting mechanism for the couch. So it's fairly easy to lift up and it holds it up. And then we have several storage compartments underneath. So we have all of our um, bus emergency supplies. We have a tire repair kit, um, air compressor, emergency triangles. We have our 50 amp cable and our water fill hose. We have some leveling blocks. And then um, again, just additional storage, towels and first aid and any other supplies you might want to fit under here. It's pretty generous storage space under the couch. The rear side of the bathroom again we have the bathroom light switch uh, we also have some additional cat friendly pieces um, a cat hammock um, some extra shelves as steps up and then a scratch post 
all this is removable or if you have cats it really works great gives them some comfortable space out of the way on the driver's side of the bus behind our living room and couch we have our kitchen um, we have LED strip lighting all along this side of the bus switched in three separate zones so we have um, a strip over the couch we have a strip under the upper cabinets and then we have a strip along the same side above the bed um, in the kitchen itself um, we have some hanging storage for produce we have upper cabinets again these cabinets are uh, locked and secured with these child safety locks that are able to be disengaged for easy opening and then for the ones that are locked for driving you attach the magnet unlocks and you can open and then disengage um, in the kitchen itself we have quartz countertops so really nice really easy to clean and keep neat um, we have our sink with remote handle and a reverse osmosis um, water filtration system so you have um, good drinking water at all times here um, and then under the counter uh, under this cabinet we have our seven gallon Bosch water heater and then under the sink we have the reverse osmosis filter we have our fire extinguisher and we have our various cleaning and kitchen supplies and then under the next cabinet we have our portable induction cooktop and then uh, we also found ourselves using our instapot quite a bit on the road really efficient way to cook um, when off grid and then behind in the last cabinet we have our electrical cabinet so we have a 5,000 watt inverter. Uh, we have emergency shutoff for power, emergency shutoff for the DC power. This is where we have our external, our gray tank and dump valve heater. So um, in colder climate, we can turn this on and that'll prevent any unwanted freezing. This is the control for the inline surge protector. So again, no external surge protector is needed when hooking up to shore power. And then I've also installed a little DC computer fan to create some airflow within the cabinet um, if things ever became too warm. It's actually never really been an issue, but it's nice to have. And then on the countertops, we also have flip down uh, USB and 110 outlets so these can stow nicely for a nice clean and then here on the passenger side of the bus across from our couch and across from the kitchen we have some additional cabinet storage so we have a pantry up here we have three shelves in here fairly deep good amount of storage and then we also have um, on the door storage underneath we have another pretty good sized cabinet this is where we keep our garbage and then this smaller cabinet next to here is actually our storage for the Reflectix window panels. So these roll up and stow away nicely in here. Uh, we have a 12 cubic foot Galan's refrigerator. So this is like an apartment sized refrigerator. Um, above the, ca uh, above the <laughs> refrigerator, above the refrigerator, we have an additional shelf, and we also have our CO and smoke detector. Another small countertop next to the refrigerator with another pop-up outlet. Again, USB and 110. Magnetic knife storage, believe it or not, um, keeps the knives in place and even the most um, bumpy roads. Another LED strip light for over here. And then another pretty generous size um, cabinet for cooking implements and or pantry storage. Behind the refrigerator and the passenger side kitchen cabinets, we have our cubic mini grizzly wood stove. Um, this is a really great additional heat source for the really cold weather. Uh, we've had this bus for extended periods in as cold as zero degree weather. And this is a, a great way to supplement the mini split and save power. Um, we have all of our wood stove implements here hung on the side. Um, this is actually Cubic Mini's wood stove mount and heat shield. And then we have wood storage underneath. 
Next to our kitchen and in front of the bed, we have our command center for all of our electrical components. So here we have an LED screen that gives you all the information on the inverter, the AC loads, our solar panel charge, and then the battery status. All of our electrical components are Victron, so they all work very nicely together to give us a, a really clear and easy way to monitor this system. This is our sea level tank monitoring system. So this monitors both the gray tank outside and our fresh water tank. Um, so you can see we have 13% of our fresh water capacity right now. Uh, and this has uh, a really good resolution up to 2% of your water capacity. And then our battery monitor, again, um, the Tron component. And then right behind here, we have our controls for the mini split that hang up nicely and out of the way. This is the bedroom at the back of the bus. Underneath, we have our daughter's bed. Um, can also be converted to be additional storage. And over on the right side behind our electrical cabinet is the battery storage um, for our two 24 volt Victron batteries. Um, next to the bed, we have our closet space. So we have a shelf up top that is about 24 inches deep. Um, and then an additional cabinet here with, uh, again, 24 inch deep storage. Um, so this is clothing storage. Then to get on the bed, we have a flip down step. This is actually a, an exterior bus step. I thought it was a fun addition to add to the schooly effect. Um, on the bed itself, we have more storage down underneath um, and then another flip up cabinet. So this was our laundry storage as well as additional clothing storage. Basically just overflow for um, personal storage. And then above our bed, where the existing emergency hatch was for the bus, we replaced it with a skylight roof hatch. So we have two latches, and then it flips up with the cable to prevent it from opening too far. Come out to the roof. We have a pretty generous roof deck at the rear. Another deck in front of the skylight. And then here we have our five 375 watt solar panels. So about 1900 watts total. On the roof, we have two sections of rooftop deck on either side of our skylight hatch. The full length of the roof has iron ridge solar panel mounting rails. These are residential solar panel mounting rails. Um, that are attached to the structure of the bus. So that means uh, it's fairly easy to change configurations up here or remove and replace any parts. Um, and then in front of the rooftop deck, we've got five 375 watt solar panels. So we have almost 1900 watts of solar. Allows us to fill up the batteries fairly quickly. Behind the driver's seat, we have our bathroom. On the exterior wall of the bathroom here, we have three more hooks for hanging towels or any coats or anything else you may want to hang. Um, got a self-locking guitar stand here for anybody that plays. Uh, the bathroom light switch is located on the rear wall. And then we have a Nautilus sliding door for the bathroom itself. Um, inside the bathroom, uh, it's a full wet room. We've got a 32 by 32 inch shower pan. Got cedar paneling on the walls and ceiling, and then the rear wall and interior and front wall are all FRP paneled. Uh, we have a remote shower, and we use a airhead as our composting toilet. We have the urine tank removed and diverted straight to the gray tank, so there's no removing a urine tank for this toilet. And then, yeah, plenty of basket storage on the side and rear walls.